Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Donald Wayne Dickman here. A blessed Sunday to all of you all. I pray that you all are doing great in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am praying for each one of you uh, continuously. You can always contact me if you need special prayers. Don't forget to, if you enjoy these sermons, don't forget to press like and subscribe on my YouTube, uh, YouTube channel and also click the notification uh, uh, button there so that you will be notified of all the new messages as we continually uh, deliver messages to encourage, to lift you up, to stir you up so that you keep, keep running that race and keep the fire burning. Today I got a wonderful message for you. The message is entitled, Steps to Experiencing a Shift in Your Life. Steps to Experiencing a Shift in your life. I believe at this moment God is doing something great throughout the world, throughout the Christian world, throughout his children. God is doing a shifting. God is doing a shifting. God is shifting people from where they're stuck, where they're where, where they struggle to come out, uh, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a habit, whether it's your business, whether it's your job, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your state of mind, your depression, your anxiety, uh, all the struggles that you've gone through for many, many years and you, some of you all have accepted it as that's life. I'm doomed to live in it. And God is going to do a great shifting. God is going to do a great change. God is going to do a paradigm shift, a change where you're going to experience instantaneously change in your life. And today we're going to look at the Bible at a text from John chapter 5. We're going to look here at John chapter 5. We're going to identify certain steps that will help you on how you can tap onto this, this change that God is doing, the shifting God is doing. How you can tap on and experience it in your life where life, your life is going to be changed totally, completely. You're going to see breakthroughs. You're going to healing. You're going to see blessing. You're going to see financial abundance. You're going to see peace. You're going to see addiction broken. You're going to see depression gone. You're going to see your life change. Okay. Today we're going to look at this, this text here in John chapter 5. It says there, after, after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew a tongue Batista having five porches, and these lay a great multitude of important folks of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool, was for and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And there's a certain man was there, and, and a certain man was there which had infirmity uh, thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The important man answered and said, Sir, I have no man, no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. And then we read verse 14. And after Jesus findeth him the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come on thee. Today I only use this text in John chapter 5 of one of the signs that Jesus uh, uh, did that displayed who he is, that, that prophetically came through of who the Messiah is. And one of it here is healing this, this man who was lame and he was suffering for 38 years here. And I want to use this message today to reveal to you what God is doing in this earth at this moment. God is about to do a great shift in the lives of many people. So I encourage you today, don't be disheartened. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel because God is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving and is doing a stirring in this earth. And we must be ready. We must be sensitive. We must know the times. We must discern. And we must be prepared so that we will enjoy this shift. We will enjoy this change. We will flow along and be used by God mightily. Because when God comes into our situation, when God comes into our lives, 
Things happen, things change immediately. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take years down the road. But when Jesus wants to do it, like how he went to this man, he went to Jerusalem. And, and then he decided to go to this place that we refer to as Batista. And there had multitudes, just packed with people who are, who are, who are full of sicknesses, in, infirmities. They were lame. There were all kinds of sicknesses there. And he went to this one man. And instantaneously, this man, life was shifted. Life was changed. Life turned from hopelessness to a blessedness. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. Just open up your heart and believe in God because God can change your situation around whatever you're facing, whether it's financial problem. Many of us, that's our biggest problem is financial problem. God is able to turn it around because God is moving. And I want you to align yourself. I want you to be aware so that you know what to do when, the, when God moves and you will tap on it and enjoy a breakthrough in your business, breakthrough in your job, favor upon your life, promotions upon your life. You're going to experience peace. Anxiety is going to go. Depression is going to go. If you're sick, when God comes, God is going to shift it like this man who couldn't walk. Suddenly he was able to walk. Immediately, you know, wait, down the road. It's going to happen. No, it happened immediately. So whatever situation, your marriage, is, my, your marriage might be in, in tatters. Your children might be caught up in all kinds of habit and addiction. And sometimes you don't know what to do. But today I want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit is moving. God is about to do a shift. And what are the steps we're going to take? I'm going to identify from this text here certain important steps that we're going to take. Three Step because Jesus spoke three things to this man, and from his three three instructions that he spoke, I want to identify today three steps on how you can experience your shift. You can experience a paradigm change. You can experience from being stuck, being liberated. You can experience from being sick, being healed. You can experience from being poverty to be blessed in abundance. You can experience from Depression to be mind is healed and set free. You can experience a change. Addiction, habit will be broken. Wrong mindset will be changed. You're going to experience a paradigm shift. You're going to experience a change. I encourage you to open up your heart and receive the word because God is moving. The work of God is, is about to be explored in this earth, but we need to tap on it. We need to know what to do. We need to know how to align ourselves so we can enjoy the blessings. We cannot be ignorant. We cannot be people who are not able to discern the time because God is doing something great upon this earth. God is doing something great upon the world. You see, COVID-19 is coming. Uh, economic downturn, shutdown, every change is happening, change in the natural world. And God is doing a change in the spiritual world also. Things are going to be shaken. And, and the only way that you and I can enjoy the blessings, we must flow. We must be able to let go and flow along with God. And then God will use you mightily. Because God is doing a great shaking. The people who have been living in, in hypocrisy, God's going to expose them. Masks are going to be removed. You're going to see the sins that are hidden. God is going to blow it from the mountaintop because many people are not living a life that's right. God's going to expose. But those who are aware, those who are sensitive, you're going to experience a great shift. And God's going to use you mightily. The first point I want to talk about here, uh, three points. The first point here. When Jesus went to this place called Batista, he saw so many people there who were sick. And the Bible says in verse 4, in fact, they, they believe this. They believe this. this, 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 this they believe that this story that the angel will come and stir up the waters and the person who jumps in the pool will be healed. In fact, in many editions of the Bible, other than King James, they removed that. They put it down there. To explain the meaning, but it was not in verse 4. But they believed that, okay, whether it's there or not, the water, when certain effects of the water they went in, they got healed. And this man was waiting there to be healed, and because he cannot walk, people always go before him, and he never has a chance to go in the water when the water is bubbling and stirring up, and he never experienced it. And here Jesus comes, he shows Jesus 
Jesus appeared to him. Jesus went to Jerusalem. Jesus had no reason to go there. But because of his compassion, because of his care, because of his heart for souls, he went to this place and he went directly to this man. And he knew the condition. That's wonderful. Jesus knows our heart. Jesus knows our predicament. Jesus knows our struggle. Jesus knows our cries. Jesus hears our cries. Jesus sees. Jesus knows what you think. Jesus hears what you say. Jesus knows everything. Believe me. And he cares for you. And not only he knows, but he has compassion. And he'll come to you. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. And you see, the Bible says, in verse 6, he says, and in verse 5, and a certain man was there, which had infirmity of 38 years. 38 years he was suffering. 38 years he was caught up with this. And when Jesus comes, he will set you free. It doesn't matter how long. Some people think the longer it is, the, 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 the lesser the chances to come out of it. No, with Jesus, nothing is too long. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is too deep. Jesus comes and miracle happens. And he said 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lie there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said, will thou be made whole? So the first point I'm going to talk about here in this message, experiencing steps to experiencing a shift, shift in your life, a paradigm shift, a change, a drastic change. That God is going to take you from poverty to financial abundance. God is taking you from sickness to health. God is taking you from depression to peace of mind. God is going to break addiction to free liberty. Chains broken. Prison doors of God will shift. God is going to do I'm talking about a great shift. Because when God comes in, the situation, a solution will happen immediately. And the first point is so important is Jesus asked this question, will thou be made whole? The first point, the first lesson. For us to experience a shift, for us to experience a change, for us able to tap into the supernatural and experience great things in our life beyond what we can reason, beyond what's happening out there, we can experience. The first point is that you must make up your mind that you want a shift. The first point, you got to make up your mind. You cannot live in that old mindset. The old mindset, this man was caught up with a situation for 38 years. He was experiencing this. He couldn't walk. Some of us, when we experience something long enough, we accept it. That is our identity. People know us by that. We profess it. We confess it. You know, many times you see Christians say, oh, oh, when we go to check, go and see a doctor, we say, oh, my father had a heart attack. Oh, my, my mother had a heart attack. Oh, my father had diabetes. Oh, my grandfather had diabetes. And we confess, yes, I will have this. I will have that. You are professing curses in your life. That's why we check what you say. We are new in Jesus Christ. All things have been passed away. Before. All things become new. Medically is right, but spiritually you're going to break this curse. You're going to speak life. You're going to speak newness in your life. And it's important for us to change our mindset. We cannot have that mentality like this man could have had because he thought that there's no way he could heal. Because why? We must have a mindset. We must be focused on what you have. Many miracles in the Bible happened or occurred after Jesus asked them, what do you want me to do? You want to see a miracle, you got to have a mind that is focused. That's why your, your soul it must be healthy. The Bible says in 3 John verse 2, I desire for you to be prosperous and good health, even as your soul is prosperous. Your soul is made up, your mind, your will, your emotion. You want to see prosperity, you want to see good health, it's conditional on this being healthy, your soul. Your mind must be single-minded. Your will must be do, to do what God has called you to do. And your emotions must be full of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, not hurt and unforgiveness and sadness and, and gloominess and bitterness. You gotta get all that healed. You gotta forgive and restore. Then you see miracles. That's why it starts off. The shift starts off with you, with me. The shift starts off with our decision on what we have. We got to be single minded. We got to make up our mind. I don't want to be a lame person for the rest of my life. I don't want to be an addict. For the rest of I don't want to be addicted to alcoholism, to drugs, to nicotine, because that brings destruction to my body, that destroys my family, that, that ruins my relationship. I don't want it anymore. I don't want to pick up bad habits, pornography, and everything else. I don't want to lie. I don't want to cheat to my wife or my husband. I want to stop it because I know that brings disgust, destruction. So I made up my mind. I want to see healing. 
I want to see healing upon the sickness. I want to see healing upon my business. I want to see healing upon my marriage. I want to see healing upon my family. I want to see healing upon my life. I want to see healing. I want to see restoration. I want to see breakthrough. You got to be single minded. You cannot live in your past. Many people don't see a breakthrough because they're stuck in the situation they're struggling with. And that is their mindset. And that's what they talk and that's what they dream about and that's what they, they gossip about and they'll never come out. You can never come out of a situation until I come and play to come until unless you come to a place where you confess, you profess, you declare, I got enough of that. I want to come out. I want a breakthrough. I want a healing. I want deliverance. I want a change. I want a shift. That's why Jesus asked him the question. Obviously, Jesus knew. Jesus knew his situation has been there for, for 38, 38 years. But there's a problem. How long for Jesus? But he had to think for himself, this layman, and decide, I want healing. And that's the first point I want to encourage you today. If you want to see a change in your life, you got to make a decision. This man, when Jesus asked him that, I mean, he immediately answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is... Let me say, yes, I want healing, but I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. And while I'm coming, another step over me. I mean, he gave his reasons. I mean, because he was stuck in the situation. His mindset was stuck in the situation because his only answer is the pool. He forgets that God is above the pool. God is above all the solutions or the contingency plans that you thought that can help you. God is above that. So sometimes we, we, we set our mind on this business and that business and this opportunity and that opportunity and this person will help me and that person. And we fix our mind on that. Like this man, he fixed his mind on the pool and he's giving reason. But Jesus came and didn't help him to go in the pool because Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a deliverer. Jesus of course a breakthrough. Jesus is a miracle worker. You don't need the pool. You don't need the people. God can miraculously cause a blessing to come upon your life. But the important thing is that you must be desperate. You must be focused. You must be hungry. You must be thirsty. You must come to a place where you realize you cannot go on with the situation anymore, that you want a shift. And then the miracle starts to happen. So I encourage you today, why Jesus asked this question, do you want this question? Do you want to be healed? And this is the most important question to ask each one of us. If you are going to depression, do you want to be whole in your mind? If you're going to addiction, do you want to experience a breakthrough? Do you want to break this addiction? If you, if you are going to, to cheating on lust and pornography, do you want to be set free on lies? Do you want to be set free on drugs, alcohol? Do you want you know, prosperity? Do you want to come out of this situation? You must decide today. You must make a yes, I want. Not maybe or if you can know. Yes, I want. That is what I want. I cannot go on like this anymore. I need it. I want it. I desire it. I want God. Help me. I'm hungry for it. I'm thirsty for it. I'm desperate, God. I don't want to live in this situation. I know that, that I'm a child of God, that I'm blessed. I know that you are able to turn things around, God, and I want to change. You must decide. That's why Jesus asked him the question, because he had to make a decision. His soul got to be right. His mind got to be focused. He got to make up his mind that he don't want to be in that state anymore. In a state where he's begging, in a state where he's defeated, in a state where he cannot come out of it, in a state where no one will help him, in a state of self-destruction. No, he didn't want. He got to change. He got to say, yes, I want to change. I want to shift. And the moment you start to think that way, the moment your soul starts to get healthy, the other part starts to come through. But you need to get your soul. I desire for you to be prosper and good health, even as your soul prospers. Your soul needs to, many of us cannot see breakthroughs in our life because our soul is not healed. We go and work and after a while, because our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions are not healthy, we, we got a self 
destructive mechanism that causes us to just throw in whatever opportunities that come and walk away. In relationships, in job, in business, in whatever we do, it will appear. So we must get healed. Your mind needs to be focused, needs to be single-minded. Your will needs to do the will of God, not to do every will under the sun. And your emotions need to be healed. That you have peace, you have joy, you have patience, you have long-suffering. And it goes on, read the fruits of the Spirit and the fruit of the flesh. And you need to get right Then you see, it will affect your entire being. So the first point is so important, I want to encourage you. That you want to change. You must make a decision that I want to shift. I need a shift. I don't want to live in this condition anymore. I don't want to live in this condition where I'm being, being, being in this state for 38 years. You don't want to accept it because I've been so long, I cannot change. Some people do that. Oh, I've been in this state for so long, so I'm going to die in this state. Oh, I come from this neighborhood and everybody are drug addicts and we will be drug addicts. Everybody are drunkards and we'll be drunk. Everybody don't go to university and study. We don't. Everybody are not rich. We you know, we set that mind, we set that invisible line, that bar, that limitation, and none of us able to exceed it. And today I want you to break every limitation and say, yes, I can do it through Jesus Christ. All things are possible to Jesus Christ. When God comes in the situation, when Jesus comes in the situation, miracles happen. So I encourage you today, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, and say, yes, we can do it. When God comes, things are going to change. When you are in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Remember that. It doesn't matter how long. It might be 38 years old. It might be 40 years old. It might be 50 years struggling. God can change it. God caused Sarah, who was so old, to conceive. God can do the miracle. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. Yes. Yes, I want to be healed. Say yes. I want to experience it. Yes. I want to see my marriage restored. Yes, I want to see my children turn to the Lord. Yes, I want to see my family members all set free by addictions and, and, and habits. Yes, I want to come out of this poverty state. Yes, I want to have the peace of God upon my life. Yes. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. This is the kind of, of, of emotions you must be filled with when you spend time with God. The more you spend time with God, the more you get healed emotionally. So the first point is so important that you and I need to make up our mind. Need to be focused. Need to desire, needs to be hungry, needs to be desperate. That you want to change. Many times we don't experience that in our life because we're not hungry. We can go to church. We can go to church for 38 years, 40 years, 50 years. Go to church and come back without expecting anything. We're not hungry for revival. We're not hungry for the Holy Spirit to move in a powerful way. We're not hungry experiencing God. And we go in and come out and we never change. So we must come to a place that we are hungry. We need God. You must set your mind because you know when God comes, things are going to change. The, the monotonous life is going to change. There's going to be life. There's going to be power because the Holy Spirit does that. So I encourage you today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The second point we see here, the second point that we see Jesus teaches, first he asks, the second point, the first point, what? Will thou be what? Will thou be made healed? Will thou be made whole? King James Bible says that. Or will thou be healed? He asked the question, and his answer was he gave the reasons why he couldn't. Was, obviously, he wanted to get healed, but there were so many hindrances. But Jesus, and Jesus didn't dwell in the hindrances. Jesus listened to him, but Jesus didn't dwell in the hindrances. That's a good lesson to learn for us when you're ministering to people. You don't go and dwell in their complaints and their murmurings and their limitations because you realize that you are bringing God to the situation. When you bring God, the situation is different. When God comes, things change. I mean, I've gone, uh, people have invited me many times to pray for many people. And because we spend time praying so much and we spend time in, in the spirit so much, when you go, you go full of the spirit full of faith 
full of boldness. And many times I've gone into, into, into hospitals, ICU, CCU, where people have, have in a critical, critical condition with, with cancer and other diseases. And you go to the wife be crying because the doctors have given up hope and there's no more hope and they don't know what to devastate it. And you go in when you see the man, everything is so gloomy and everything is sad because they expect the person to die. But when you start to preach, when I start to minister the word, encourage when I speak the word, I speak life, I speak healing. And when I pray and Every time I do that, I see at the end of the whole session of ministry, their life change. Immediately you see a glow come upon them. Immediately you see your life. Immediately you see hope. You immediately you see all hopelessness gone. Why? Because when you spend time with God and you minister with boldness and with faith, you're going to see suddenly hope comes in them. The Holy Spirit touches them and stirs them. My people have been discharged within days after I've gone and prayed for people. Why? Because God does a miracle instantaneously. Even a doctor says they're going to die. That's what happens. You must set your mind and we can help them when we come and minister with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will stir them up. What is within you will come out and stir them up and set them on fire and something will happen deep down inside. And that's what we need to do. Instead of that, many people just go and prepare them to go off. I mean, some of them are experts and let them do, but I want to encourage you today. You carry the anointing, you carry life, you carry power. Speaks words of life. Speak word of life. The word of God is a life. The word of God is, is, is powerful. The second point we see here in steps to experiencing a shift in your life is First lesson, you must make up your mind that you want to shift. You must single-minded, you must focus. You need to desire, you need to hungry, you need to thirsty. And the second point is important here. We study the Bible here. What is the second verse that Jesus told him was in verse, let me get it, in verse 8. In verse 8, he says what? In verse 6, will thou be made whole? In verse 8, he says, rise up, take up thy bed and walk. I mean, imagine that Jesus comes to a man that is lame for 38 years and he got no more hope. His only hope is stepping into the pool where the pool stirs up, the bubbles come, but, and they believe the angel comes and the first man he goes in the heel and that's his only hope. And sometimes that's how we are. Our only hope is this project comes through. Our only hope is this person helps me. Our only hope is this person holds a ministerial post so I got jalan to go through. I got our avenues to go through a tap on and, and when that will happen, we are devastated. But here, Jesus come in letting you know that's not your only hope because he is the way. He is the truth and he is the life and we need to look at him instead of looking at all the other avenues because he will make a way where there seems to be no way and here after this man when Jesus said will thou be made whole and this man pours out his heart and says when the water is trouble uh, I need to be put in the first person goes in will be healed but people step on over me nobody helps me and because I'm here but what did Jesus say Jesus don't dwell on the on, on the on the pity pity party talk he didn't join, join the pity party talk Jesus just just steps above it and speaks about faith. That's what we must do. Many times we join the pity party talk and everybody comes very pitiful and sad and no miracles happen. So we need to speak faith into situations where it's impossible. Instead of joining, when they tell you a problem, many people say, oh, I saw had a problem. I had a bigger problem. And you all go back with double squared or triple squared or, or, or cube and whatsoever the problem. So here, the second point is Jesus rise up Rise, take up the bed and walk. Second point. First point is, first point is you must be focused. You must be, you must make up your mind. You must be hungry. That means your whole emotions, your whole mind, your will must be focused and getting healed. The second step is not, it's not enough to, to, to be geared up. Yes, I want the healing. Yes, I want the miracle. Yes, I believe it is not enough. The second step is as important as the first step. The first step is crucial. The second step, yes, I believe. Yes, I made up my mind. I don't want to stay in this state of, of, of sickness and poverty and, and addiction and habit and marital problem and children. Problem. Yes, I made up. I don't want. Second step. The second point is what is the step? Is what are the actions you're going to take? The second point is you must act upon what you want. Act. Action. Faith without works is dead, the book of James says. You must put feet to your faith. Many people, they can profess something, but they don't act upon it. That's why they never see a miracle. And we see in the Bible, many times you see people who experience great things was because people who acted upon it. They have come to a place and said, enough. 
of what I'm going through. I want to see a breakthrough. I made up my mind. I have faith a breakthrough. And I'm going to take the necessary steps. Are you taking the necessary steps? It's not enough to confess and profess. You need to act upon it. You need to take that first step. Like how Peter, Jesus, can I walk on the water? Say, come. Jesus, Peter could never experience the miracle of walking on the water until unless he acted upon it. He acted upon the word of Jesus and he walked on the water. In the same thing, the woman, the issue of blood, she's made a decision that I'm going to hold on to the hem of Jesus. I'm going to, I'm going to touch the hem of Jesus. When I touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, I will be healed. She made up her mind. She didn't want to be the state of the issue of blood forever. She wanted to be healed. But she had to act. She had to go out of her house. She got to push through the crowd and she had to reach her. Not easy, but she acted upon it. And every person, uh, a Naaman in the Old Testament, he wanted to heal from leprosy. He had to dip in the river seven times. He didn't like it. He had to do it. The woman, the prophet's widow in, in the Old Testament, in King Elisha told her, uh, get her all the empty barrels. And she get her, I said, what do you have? I have a small barrel of oil. Pour your oil. Until unless she poured, she never could have experienced a breakthrough, financial breakthrough, to pay all her debts and have abundance of rest. She had to pour. They act. You've got to act upon it. So are you acting? Are you taking action in what that you're praying for? Yes, you believe for a breakthrough, for a financial breakthrough, for a breakthrough, for a business of life. But are you acting on what God has told you? God will tell you things now. God will give you instruction. Are you acting on it? God will tell you, yes, you must go to the other side. Start it. Yes, you get involved with it. Yes, partner with that person. Oh, oh God, bless this ministry. Bless that person. Bless the church. God will tell you all kinds of instruction. But you need to act upon God's word. And when you truly act upon it, then you see the miracle. Like how when Elijah went to Zarephath and, she, and, the, and he told the woman, give me water. She gave, and he said, bake me a bread. She said, a little flour, a little oil. We're supposed to bake a bread and drive me and my child. Elijah, Elijah said, go and bake me. She acted by faith. And by baking that bread for Elijah first, instead of giving her a child that last amount of it, she was taken care of throughout the famine. God made the oil multiply. The flower multiplied, she was never like. And you need to learn to act upon the word of God. Sometimes the word of God will come out to you while you're reading the Bible. Sometimes while you're worshipping. Sometimes I hear audible voice. Sometimes I have an impression. But you need to act upon the word. When you act upon the word, like how Jesus said, rise up. I mean, imagine this guy has been 38 years old in this, 38 years in this situation. He knows he cannot do it, but he had to take action. He had to believe that this man is coming and telling me. If he told me, even though I cannot, I'm going to trust him. He's able to. That's how we must do things. It's not our might. It's not our strength. It's by the Holy Spirit. It's not by our abilities. It's by God. And whatever God tells us to do, even though you and I cannot do it by our own experience and ability, we are going to do it. Why? Because as long as God says, as long as in the Bible, I'm going to obey and God will make it possible. And that's so important here. He acted upon it. He acted upon it. That's so why you see the Bible says very clearly here, he, he acted. I remember uh, going and praying for a woman in FGA Taiping Church uh, many, many years ago. And, and this woman couldn't walk for many years. And, and we prayed. It was an evangelistic meeting. And the first meeting, she accepted Christ. She was a Hindu. She accepted Christ. And the second meeting, we prayed for her. And I prayed for healing. And I remember Dr. Doss was there in the meeting. And after I prayed, he instructed her in Tamil to stand up. And when she decided to stand up, she experienced the miracle. That's why we need to act upon it. When you act upon it, when you even though you're lame, you act upon it. The word is spoken. You act upon it. You'll see the miracle. And this is what will happen when you act upon it. So I encourage you today to act upon it, to act. So Jesus told her, Jesus told this man, get up, pick up your mat and walk. In the Bible, you see many times, you see the word get up. First thing he told him, get up. He was in that situation for 38 years. Now he's going to get up. I mean, that is impossible for him by himself. But now he knows this man named Jesus has come and told me, if he tells me, he's going to cause it to happen and I'm going to get up. And by that word of faith speaking to his life and he receiving it, he acted upon it and was able to get up. So he stood up and, and we see many times in the Bible, you see that miracles happen. That's why you see what I want to encourage you today. You need a shift. 
We cannot be doing the same thing over and over and expect something different. Uh, we get a, a statement that, that, is, that is credited to Albert Einstein. He says, a definition of insanity is, is, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You cannot be doing the same thing, same thing. I expect to go into that, that, that pool, but I cannot go there because I'm lame. People step away and I wait there for 30 years. It cannot happen. So you need different. What's different? Jesus came. And what's different in your life? You need to turn to Jesus. You've been trying something over and not working out. You need to turn to Jesus. You've been praying and not working out. You need to pray more. You need to fast more. Because he is the answer. He's able. So do something different. Because Jesus can make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Because Jesus is a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. When Jesus comes, the impossible becomes a possibility. The impossible becomes an impossibility. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let me get the next point here. Okay, three things he told him in point number two. First thing he told him was, he says, rise, rise up, rise. Something which couldn't do before, rise up, overcome. Take up your bed and walk, okay? So the first thing is rise up. Rise up. Something is impossible, he could do it. In the New Testament, the old, in the Bible, in fact, it says, the command to get up is mentioned many times. Get up, stand up, rise. A number of them in the Gospels, you see, awaken, then rise up, get up here. We see it in the paralytic uh, when the ceiling of a home was broken and they brought the paralytic down, Jesus told the man to rise up. A man in the synagogue was shriveled. Jesus spoke to him, Behold, rise up. Jairus' daughter who was raised from the dead to rise up, get up, behold. The crippled man at a beautiful gate at, at the temple again was spoken to rise up. Huh? So the man hearing the voice of Jesus and, and, and simply doing the miracle happened. That's why it's important for us at this time, you want to experience the miracle, you got to act upon it. If God has given you something, if God has spoken to you something, the word of God is instructing you something, act upon it, act upon it. You cannot see the miracle until and unless you put feet to your faith, until you act upon it. That's why you see, you expect God to bless you financially, but you are so stingy with your money, you keep it to yourself, and you don't give generously towards the work of God, towards mission, towards God's work. You don't give the tithes, you go your free, and you expect great. It doesn't happen that way. you got to act upon the word. You act upon the word, God will bless you. You act upon the promise of God, God will bless you. When God tells you to do something, you do it by faith, not by logic, by reason, by faith, and you'll see the miracle. Amen. So the first thing Jesus said to rise up. The second thing Jesus told him was, second thing Jesus told him was to take up your bed or your pallet. It means that you cannot go back to your bed anymore. That, that pallet that you were stuck on to, to, to sleep, you don't need, we're going to throw it away, in fact. In fact, we're going to burn bridges to our past. You're not going to go back. There's no such thing as going back in case it doesn't work out. And when it comes to believing in God, you've got to burn your bridges. If God says something, that's it, finish. I'm going to burn my bridges. I'm not going to leave that pallet. I'm not going to leave that bed there. In case I cannot walk, I'm going to come back. No, no. I'm going to lift it up. The bed that kept you down, now you're going to lift it up and show that you are an overcomer to Jesus Christ. He's no more holding you down. You have overcome it. That's why he said, pick up your bed. Pick up your bed. Rise up. Pick up your bed. That's the second point. You gotta take action. You gotta rise up, pick up your bed. And the third thing he said, the second point, keep walking and walk. That means you gotta keep walking, you gotta keep living in that weak tree. Some of us we walk for a while, and after our mind will bring all kinds of negativity, like, like Peter, he started to walk on the water, and after a while he realized the storm and the waves, and he fear came and he started to go under. And we cannot remember, keep walking. You gotta keep enjoying the healing, the breakthrough, the prosperity, the blessing. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking in faith. Because once Jesus does it, he doesn't come back. Keep walking in faith. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Walk. Jesus does not, does not help the man to get in the water. He comes to him on his mat. The same mat and situation the man was, the man so wants to escape and speaks words of life and resurrection. That's what Jesus does. He comes into your situation and he does a, a miracle there. Get up of your mat. 
to go quote Jesus can clearly he says stand up take up your bed and walk the man does not leave his bed behind he goes with him his circumstances are real the difference he now carries them they no longer carry him Jesus doesn't change our outer circumstances he changes us we need to change first to see a miracle Many of us expect Jesus to come and change everything, but we don't change. That's why we never achieve great heights. We need to change first. He calls us into a new way of being, seeing, acting, speaking, thinking. When we stand and rise to a new life, we discover the circumstances have somehow changed. That doesn't, that doesn't necessarily make life easy or mean we no longer have to deal with the circumstances of our life. It makes our circumstances more manageable and we engage them from a different place and position. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last point I'll close with this is Jesus said in verse 14, verse 14, he, and Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon thee. Last point, Jesus said, Sin no more. Sin no more. Jesus gives him an instruction, a warning. Don't go and sin anymore. Because less, a worse thing comes about. So last point is, learn from your past and don't repeat it. Don't repeat it. You failed for many reasons. You experienced a bitterness, pain, shame for many reasons. You learn why you did it, what happened, what caused it. Learn and become a better person. Don't go back. Don't go back to the addiction. Don't go back to the habit. Don't go back to the lust. Don't go to lying and cheating. Don't go back to sinful life. You learn how misery, how much of misery it brings, how much of pain and shame, how deep the depth you went into. Now you say, enough. I learned from it. Now I'm going to go and sin no more. That's what's important. You cannot go back. You see a breakthrough. Some of us take it lightly. We cry out to God. God sets us free. And after a while, we go back into a mediocre life. We compromise. And again, we experience. We see that happening in the Old Testament over and over and over with the people of God. They cried out, God delivered them. They went back to sin. They went to captivity. God delivered them again. And he went on. So let us change. Let us change. Don't go back. Sin no more. And that's our life. Learn from the things that you went through. Let it be a, a stones, lessons that you can step on and become a better person so that you improve. You don't do the same mistakes over and over. People say history repeats itself. Don't let it repeat the bad thing. Learn from it. You don't do the mistakes. Things that brought misery and shame, don't do it. Learn to be obedient. Learn to walk in the Lord. Learn to read the Bible. Learn to pray. Learn to spend time in the Spirit. And as you do that, you see God's favor, God's blessing. God will cause situations to change. God will cause a shift in the environment. God will cause a shift within the people. And favor and blessings will come your way. Opportunities will open your day. Favor will come upon. That's what God will do when you change. We need to change. We need to change. We need to change. And that's what Jesus told him. The third lesson. And I encourage you today. You need to to change. You need to go to the Lord. When you go to the Lord and spend time with God and pray and spend time in prayer and reading the Bible and living a life that's right, you see God come into your marriage and restore. God come into your insecurity and remove it and give you boldness and, 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 and give you a self word and know who you are. God will come and set you free. God will come and, and lift you up. God will come and promote you. God will come and favor you. God's presence be with you. I want to encourage you today. Go and sin no more. The last point. Don't do the same things you've done before that cause you to get stuck, cause you to be entangled, cause you to be caught up in captivity, cause you, cause you to be put in a prison, cause you to be jailed. Many people are caught up with addiction, with alcoholism, with drugs, with nicotine. I mean, now they try to break up with soap because what? They just taste it. They just want to have fun with their friends. Or somebody say, come on, have one glass or one, one, one smoke. And after that, now it's soap. So when God set you free, don't go back anymore. Say, no, I don't want to touch anything. I've tasted it. It's not good at all. I want to go to God. God, God's taste is the best. That's it. Make a decision to be firm because you know how much of misery and pain can come to them. Be firm. Don't go back, but go towards the Lord more and you see the blessings of God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I encourage you today, get ready because God is going to do a great shift in your life. Get ready. Apply the steps as it comes. Be sensitive. Be, uh, get aligned to it 
so that you will experience the shift. No matter how long you've been going through the situation, no matter what people have said, no matter how much of curses people have said, many people say, you cannot come out of it, you're doomed for it, and this is your life. No, no, don't accept it. Don't accept it. Tell yourself that I know that my God is able. My God is able to take me on. I want to change. I want to see a blessing. I want to see a breakthrough. I want to see a financial. I want to see healing. I want to be restored. And you set your mind, and then you act upon it. Learn from your past, but don't go back to it. And you see God's blessing. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Expect a shift in your life. A shift where God is going to lift you out of the mighty clay. God's going to lift you out of pit. God's going to lift you out of poverty. God will lift you out of sickness. And God will bless you and heal you and restore you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Shalom. Amen.